Hello, this is Rob from Room 111. Uh, a few days ago I posted a, a video using um, the Alien Bees B1600 and a Pulse Buff 47 inch Octabox. I have exactly the same setup, uh, but this time I'm using three Young Newell YN 563 speed lights. And this is the newest generation of the 560. It has the built in radio receiver, which is really, really great. Uh, it saves a lot of money on. Uh, it eliminates the necessity to buy separate receivers to trigger the strobes because they're built in. So before we get to the portraits, just let me walk you real quickly through the agenda here. Uh, I'm going to show you a diagram of the of the setup. Then I'll show you some actual shots of the setup. Then we'll move into the portraits. We'll do. I'll show you what it, what it looked like just with ambient with no strobes firing. Then I'll show you the key only then two lights, the key plus the hair light, then we'll turn on the third light for the backdrop. So it'll be one, and then two, and then three. And then we'll go into some high key, and then I'll show you the gels. As you can see here, this is the green gel. Then I'll walk you through the equipment list of everything I used in the uh, in the shoot. And of course, this I wanted to just throw this disclaimer up, obviously. This is a mannequin because uh, uh, I'm doing just a lot of time, uh, just you know, just hitting it hard, you know, and just paying my dues. So uh, it's just it'd be impractical to call a model over, even if it's a TF model. I just there's too much trial and error, and I just don't want to waste a model's time trying to get uh, trying to get my setups right. I will obviously in the very near future, but I'm just doing some R&D in the lab, and uh, I don't want to call the model over just yet. Okay, so here's the setup. Um, the mannequin here is four feet between the backdrop, right? Uh, there's four feet of distance here between the, the backdrop and the mannequin. Uh, my umbrella, I'm using the YN6, YN563, I'm shooting through an umbrella. And the, the face of the umbrella here is 18 inches from the subject. The camera is seven feet from the mannequin. And there's again, so it's 11 feet total, four feet between, and then another seven feet between the subject and the camera. The backdrop light is three and a half feet from the backdrop. And, uh, oh, I need to change this. This is, there's no snoot on here. This was from my Alien Bees. So it's just the, the naked uh, speed light is three feet from the mannequin. Okay, so now you have the setup. Let's go to the actual portraits. Okay, so this is the setup. Um, you can see I'm just in a living room here. This is my cousin's place. I'm in Florida, and this is my cousin's vacation home. He's just allowing me to use it as an ad hoc studio. I move into a new place on, uh, in just a couple of days from now. I've already got it. So, But this was just my initial kind of ad hoc studio. Um, so you can see the three the lights here. There's one. This is shooting through the umbrella. This is the hair light. You can see here it's firing and it's illuminating the hair and her sh shoulder, so it's acting as a rim. And this is my gel. I got a green gel on here, obviously, and I'm popping the uh, satin backdrop. This is the backdrop stand. I have some black muslin here, and then a piece of satin that's over the black muslin. I just fold it right over. Okay, this is the same shot, basically, with, with the blue gel. When I was testing the blue gel, I just uh, did a shot here of the overall scene so you can see here a better shot of the young Nuo as the key so here's my key shooting through the umbrella hair backdrop so those are the three lights okay just a different view of the satin you can see here where it's illuminating these ruffles and it, it's giving it a really nice t texture here another view again this is 18 inches from the face of this umbrella to her face, it's 18 inches. And it, uh, the power on all three lights was somewhere between a quarter and an eighth. So I had plenty of uh, power to spare in the speed lights, all three of them. Okay, another shot here. You can see again the hair light is illuminating the hair. One more. I think this is the last one of the setup. No, one more. Okay, again, 18 inches. 
Okay, here's now here we're getting into the portraits. This is ambient only. It's not really even true ambient. I had a lamp burning just to, uh, when I because it was really early in the morning when I went over there and I just turned on a lamp before the sun rose just so I could see and I forgot to turn it off. So there is just a little bit of uh, lamp illuminating this side of her face and her shoulder, but it's just you know it's a little bit of incandescent light. It's just very minimal. But this is pretty much just an ambient. Um, this is some light coming in from the window acting kind of as a hair light here rim light and this illuminating her arm but it's again it's very minimal now you'll see here when I turn on the first speed light it blows that right out see right here it just took that into darkness okay when I turned on the uh, the, key, the uh, young first nine you this is coming through the umbrella and this is at f8 I metered here until I got the until I got my light to f8 that's what I wanted to use. Also, I, I just want to apologize. This sh this shadow here, it should be a little bit lower, but uh, I maxed out. If you if you go back, you'll see that the uh, umbrella is maxed out at the the drop ceiling of seven feet. So ideally, I would like to get that umbrella up a little bit higher to get this shadow a little bit lower. Okay, but again, I ran out of ceiling, and so this is the maximum I had. So I ha I just went ahead and worked with it. Okay, so here's the hair light. Now, I turned on the second young Nuo, so now I have two firing. I have my key coming through the umbrella, and I have the hair light over here firing, and it's striking her hair here and her arm, so it's acting as a, a hair and a, a little rim. So again, I'll show you. No hair light, hair light. Okay, and now this is... I pulled down the satin from the the backdrop. Okay, so this one here was just the plain back, the backdrop, the black muslin, and now I pulled down the satin, and it's just being illuminated now by the spill of the key light. So here's where I have satin. It's just spill light. Okay, so now I turned on the third light. So this is where we have all three lights. We have the key firing through the umbrella. We have the hair light lighting the hair and arm. And now there's this light over here. It's firing and striking the satin and it's acting as a high key. I metered until it got to F11. So this is what I wanted to use was a high key shot. Okay, now I placed uh, a colored gels. We're getting into the gels. I placed the yellow on uh, this shot here of course but I didn't adjust the power of the speed light I didn't take it up or down this is it, this is the actual what it was so I put the yellow gel on there and then I took my light meter and I measured I got a, a meter reading here when it fired of F9 so I lost two-thirds of a stop using the yellow gel okay I changed the gel to green I, I did, I, and it wasn't just one. I made sure I did two or three just to make sure that these all these uh, readings were accurate. So again, I, I popped it about three times, and each time I got six three. So I knew it was accurate. And so the green, I lost one and two thirds stops. The red, it went down to three five, which means I lost three and a third stop. But it's still it's still pretty uh, bright. I mean, it's still well illuminated for losing three and a third stops. It's still because it's satin and it's so reflective, it doesn't uh, appear really dim. Blue was the same. It ate three and a half, three excuse me, three and a third stops of light. So when I metered here, I got three five. But it's still, I mean, it's uh, it's not too bad. It's still pretty bright. Okay, now I wanted to show you these images again without any text here. Before, remember, I had all this text showing the different lighting conditions so I want to show you the same images again without any text to clutter the image so I'll walk you through here this is uh, no hair light this is one light just the key key plus hair key plus hair and just the spill light hitting the satin key plus hair plus backdrop light high key okay all three are firing yellow gel all three firing green gel all three firing red gel all three firing blue gel now here's the equipment list I'll show you everything I used in in this uh, 
in this uh, shoot here. This is the camera. I use a, a Nikon D7100. This was the lens, 70 through 300, and all these were taken at 70. This is the speed light, and again, this is it's got the built-in radio, which is uh, again I just cannot tell you what kind of a deal this is at seventy-five dollars. This is probably one of the best investments I ever made in photography, and I've been doing photography for over twenty years, and I don't think I ever got a better return on my investment as far as value than these young Newell 563s. Just an incredible bargain. Okay, now this is the the, the tr uh, transmitter that makes all three fire. Okay, because some people use pocket wizards. I even have a couple of pocket wizards. I paid a hundred dollars a piece for uh, two pocket wizards. So just those two alone, I paid two hundred dollars for. Now you go back to the this young Nuo. It's got the built-in receiver. So to make all three fire, all I needed was this. I put this in the hot shoe of my camera, and this is the RF six zero three. Okay, so for twenty one dollars. I'm making all three of those strobes fire at the same time if they're in while they're in a radio mode. So again, for 21 bucks, and I've got 200 just in two pocket wizards. So it just shows you what kind of a, an exceptional deal that is to have the built-in radio receiver. Okay, this is the little umbrella I use. Again, it's uh, 33 inches because of that ceiling I knew I was limited on clearance a seven foot ceiling so I went with a small umbrella to try to get as much height as I could I didn't want to use a, a 43 or a 45 inch umbrella because then I would have even had the light lower which would have placed the shadow on the nose even higher so I went with this 33 inch umbrella 10 bucks can't beat it these are the umbrella adapters I used Cowboy Studio this is the gel set um, as I said in the other video, my Alien Bees video, uh, you get 10 gels in this pack. You get five types and you get two of each. So you get two red, two green, two blue, two yellow, and two heavy frost. They're just diffusing, uh, the, two, the heavy frost are diffusing gels. They're still kind of whitish, but they're just frosted to diffuse the light even more. This is the light meter. Um, these are the basic three. So I this is I use these same settings when I shoot. I shoot at ISO 100, 1 over 125 on the shutter. So I just pop this and it gives me what aperture, okay? So if like say here this is 16, it means the light would be too bright. I shoot at f8. So if I were to pop this and it gives me 16, I just go, you know, turn down the power. I keep turning the power down until when I pop this it gives me 8 here. It'll say 8 and then I know I'm good. Okay, this is my backdrop stand. This is the backdrop material, this black material. I would highly advise, as I said in the other video, this is 10 by 20. Now they sell this in a 10 by 10 or a 10 by 12, but here's the problem. Uh, one ply, if you buy the 10 by 12, the material is too thin and it doesn't block the light. It, it just doesn't block the light. So what I did is I bought this 10 by 20 and I doubled the material in this direction. Okay, so it's 10 feet wide but it's 20 feet this way in height and I just doubled it so imagine it hits here imagine this is 10 feet I just doubled the material and brought it back up again and clamped it with some clamps so it's now it's 10 feet in this direction but it's two ply and that really does block the light so I would highly recommend you going with the 10 by 20 it's only 10 extra dollars if you go with the 10 by 10 it's 29 dollars so for 10 dollars more you get twice the material this is uh, the satin I bought. The, the satin I bought from Walmart. I actually took this picture right in Walmart. Uh, the Creative Cuts. Uh, it's five feet by six feet, and this is eight dollars and seventy-three cents. So you can't beat it for eight dollars and seventy-three cents. And here's another view. It's right here on my shopping basket. You can tell this is the actual shopping basket here. And I just set the material on the basket and took a picture of it. So you can see the sheen, how it's reflecting light, even in the store. Okay, these are the clamps I used to... Uh, uh, now the muslin, the black muslin has a loop in it. It actually has a loop that the horizontal bar goes through. Okay, but the satin, I needed to clamp the satin to the... To the uh, the horizontal bar. So these are the clamps I use to do the clamping. 
This is the mannequin I used, uh, an incredible value for $54. I'm using uh, this mannequin all the time just uh, with the, my Octobox, my beauty dish, uh, the Young Nuo strobes. It's just, I'm doing a, a, a million different things. Yeah, like I say, it's just, as an artist, you got to do your R&D, right? Just like a scientist, you got to have a lab, you got to do your R&D. But for artists, we don't call it a lab, we call it a studio, and it's still the same principle. You're doing your R&D, trying to trying to uh, you know hone your craft so this is it gives you the, the three dimensions that you really need so I would highly recommend you getting a mannequin and just doing a boatload of practice on your mannequin and then when you when you feel you're comfortable you got your settings down everything is clicking for you then that's the time you you call up a, a model and then you shoot with a model this, these are the clothes I used on the mannequin here, and I'll just go through these with you real quick. This costume jewelry, this was $6 at Walmart. Everything here is from Walmart, so it's $6 for the costume jewelry necklace. This fuchsia spaghetti strap top, it's, it's spandex, it's real stretchy. This was $5.88. These referee stripe leggings were uh, 9 I think $9.88. And then this wrist cuff or bangle, whatever you want to call it, this was less than $10. This was about $9. And I would highly recommend you get one of these. Of all the accessories that you can use to make an outfit pop, nothing will make an outfit pop more than a wrist cuff or a bangle, whatever you want to call it. These, these are the go-to accessories to make any outfit just pop. So I, I never shoot without one of these on a model. And I've got a, quite a few different ones. I've got about seven, eight, nine of these in different styles and different colors and whatnot. But the, whatever, I always try to, you know, so you can tell here the fuchsia is going with the fuchsia here. And there's even some black here that go with the black and the legging. So all this is matching. And you get one of these and tie, it, tie the outfit in and boom, your outfit is clicking. Okay, we're back to the the beginning of the presentation again. So that was it. That was uh, that was a portrait uh, setup with three young Nuo YN 563s with the built-in radio receivers. And again, all you need is the RF 603 transmitter to make those fire. Okay, so for 21 bucks, I have the transmitter that's making them all fire. So that's it. I hope you found this helpful. I was I hope you learned a little bit from this and if you did, I would appreciate a like if you can go ahead and click the like button. And the next one I'll do is uh the beauty dish. I'm going to do that on Saturday and I'll have it at the proper height. I got to get that beauty dish up high at about uh about 8 feet and th this new place I'm going to, it'll have the proper clearance to use the beauty dish in the way it's supposed to be used. So I'll post that when I when I do that. Thank you and see you next time.